Hello and welcome to NBA Talk with Jordan Valdez. First things first, let's get to today's matchups. And our first matchup is Danny Granger versus Elgin Brand. Danny Granger, starting small forward for the Indiana Pacers, can also play power forward. Good shooter, really led that team. Uh, they got the eighth seed in the playoffs this year. Um, he uh, was a uh, fantastic, he, he's probably their best player. Um, he really uh, carried that team on his back. He's a great scorer. Um, he really uh, took them to the next level. They got the eighth seed after missing the playoffs the year before. Um, and what they did with the eighth seed, they didn't make it to the second round of the playoffs. They lost to the um, Chicago Bulls in the first round of the playoffs. But he really, uh, they, they wouldn't have been there. They would have been at the bottom of the, the Indiana Pacers would be at the bottom of the standings in the Eastern Conference without Danny Granger. Elton Brand, uh, starting power forward for the Philadelphia 76ers. He can also play center. Um, he also led his team to, the, to a low seed in the playoffs. Uh, they were the seventh seed. They were also eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. Um, uh, by the, the, they were eliminated by the Miami Heat. Um, well, um, the, what, what these two players uh, have in common is that not, not only uh, are they both power forwards, but... They both, the last time each of them made the All-Star team was during the 2008-2009 season, and that's a little bit of why I picked this uh, matchup, because they're kind of similar players. Now, I'm going to give this matchup to Danny Granger, and I'll tell you why. It's because Elton Brand had help. I, I know his team was a higher seed than the Pacers, but he had help getting them there. He had Andre Iguodala helping him, and Andre Iguodala is also uh, a, a more elite player. Um, Danny Granger, he was the only one on this team, so he really had to carry that team on his back, and he did get them to the playoffs. So I think that's why he's the better player, so he deserves that matchup. Our next matchup is Boris Diaw versus Richard Lewis. Boris Diaw, uh, shooting guard, small forward, power forward for the um, Charlotte Bobcats. He's very versatile. He can play three different positions. There's not many players in the NBA right now that you can say that about. Um, he's a good shooter, but he also has some post moves. Um, he's six foot eight. Um, uh, R Richard Lewis is taller. He's six ten. He's a small forward, power forward for the uh, Washington Wizards. He was traded to the Wizards earlier this season from the Magic in exchange for Gilbert Arenas. Um, he, when he got to the Wizards, he was he got injured, so uh, he didn't play for them very much, but um, I expect him to be very good for them uh, this upcoming season. He's a little bit past his prime. He's a two-time All-Star um, with uh, both Seattle, once with Seattle and once with Orlando. Um, he's a great three-point shooter, but just like Boris Dio, he does have some post moves as well. Um, I'm going to give that matchup to Richard Lewis because I think that he still has it in him to be a uh, very uh, much of a scoring threat um, to other teams. Boris Diaw, yes, probably will be the best player on the Bobcats this year, uh, uh, given the fact that they traded away uh, the two players that used to be their best players, Steven Jackson and Gerald Wallace. So Boris Diaw or Corey Maggett uh, probably will be uh, their best player, but um, Richard Lewis, obviously he's not going to be the best player on Washington. I'm going to say Jordan Crawford's going to be the best player on Washington, maybe John Wall. Um, but Richard Lewis, um, he, if he were, if he were on the Bobcats, he would be their best player. And he's just a very good player. So, uh, I'm going to give this matchup to Richard Lewis. Now let's talk NBA headlines. Eddie Curry lost 50 pounds since March. Thank you for watching NBA Talk with Jordan Valdez, and I'll see you next time.